So I want to give you just a few scriptures about standing on the promises. It'll sound a lot better than me trying to sing it, okay? Psalms 119 verse 116 declares, Lord, strengthen my inner being by the promises of your word. Put your hand on your belly and say, God, strengthen my inner being by the promises of your word. It goes on to say, so that I may live faithful and unashamed for you. One of the things that I found has been beneficial this year is not just to read the word with my eyes, but to read the word with my mouth. To let my mouth, remember it's the, the decade of the mouth? So opening up my mouth and actually reading the word out loud and receiving the impartation from the word. Romans 4.16 declares this, the promise depends on faith so that it can be experienced as a grace gift. And now it extends to all the descendants of Abraham. So what is it saying? We've got to actually activate our faith and partner with the promise. How many understand that we've got to actually partner with the promise? Jesus came and gave his life for the salvation of all mankind, but it's only those who activate by faith that salvation that will be saved, right? Everybody doesn't just automatically get saved because Jesus did that. Everybody doesn't automatically get healed because Jesus paid the price for it. Everybody doesn't automatically get delivered. We've got to actually activate our faith and partner with the promise of God in order to see it come to pass. Some of you might be saying, well, this isn't working for me. I'm still sick. I want to encourage you, keep decreeing the word. Keep partnering with the word. Continue to mix your faith with the word, the promise of God, and you're going to see because the word does not fail. I should hear a lot more amens than that, okay? The word does not fail. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 declares this. So don't lose your bold, courageous faith for you are destined for a great reward. You need the strength of endurance to reveal the poetry of God's will. Then you will receive the promise in full. For soon and very soon, the one who is appearing will come without delay. Now this is talking about the, the, the return of Christ. But how many know Jesus is coming every single day? When we're looking for him, Jesus comes down into our circumstance, down into our life, and gives us the opportunity to partner with his promise, to stand on his promise, to actually see it come to pass. There are people that have walked away from the faith saying, saying, guess what, that doesn't work for me, because they don't understand that we've got to enter in, and we've got to activate the faith to see the promises come to pass. And I promise, when we do that, God's word works. I want you to say that. Say, God's word works. Now, let's look at one more scripture about the standing on the promises, and that's out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. These are all out of the Passion Translation. Um, that's what I'm reading these days, okay? It says, now God has offered to us the same promise of entering in to his realm of resting in confident faith. The realm of resting in confident faith. Let me just ask you a question. How many of you wake up in the middle of the night worried that you're not saved? Anybody? Not saved. No, why? Because we've learned to rest in confident faith that we've confessed with our mouth the Lord Jesus. We believed in our heart that God's raised him from the dead. And so guess what? We don't worry about our salvation, right? Because we are resting in confident faith. So why then do we worry about anything else? Why do we worry about provision? Why do we worry about healing in our bodies? If we can put that same faith in action and understand that God's already done the hardest thing that was save our souls from hell, and we have complete confidence in that, we have complete rest in that, understand that he's going to give us the ability to enter into the rest of that confident faith for every other area of our life. It says, so we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. Not fail to experience it. See, it's not just about saying God heals. It's about experiencing God's healing. It's not just saying God gives you peace. It's experiencing that peace. How do you do that? 
you enter into the word of God, you confess the word of God, you get in God's presence, and you let God download to you everything that is that you need so that we can actually experience the fullness of God's promise. It says, for we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did, speaking of other Jews, yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest. Just lift your hands up. Let's just pray. Father, activate faith inside of us so that we can experience the promise. Father, let this new year, God, not be tainted by disappointments, by betrayals, by, by hurts, by fears, by traumas that we've gone through in this last season. I pray right now, Father God, that our faith would be activated so that we can move past the soul region and step into the spirit region and begin to to understand that you've given us the realm of the spirit to be able to experience every manifestation of the promise that Jesus died to give us. So Lord, we leave the past behind. God, we pray for healing of our hearts, healing of our souls. We forgive those, Lord, that have hurt us, that have wounded us. This is always a good thing to do every day, but especially at the end of the year, sometimes you just got to go back and say, God, is there anything I need to clean my slate of so that I can stand on the promise of God? Amen? And let me just say, 2020 has been quite a year. Okay? 2020 has been quite a year. We're going to stand on the promises of God. Faith activates the promise, and we experience the realm of confident rest. How many believe you're going to come into a new season of faith? Amen? Now, the second thing that we've got to do, we've got to stand on the promises. The second thing we've got to do is we've got to war with the prophecies. It's different than just standing on the promises. But warring with the prophecies is an aggressive stance to say, you know what, I'm going to lay hold of everything that God has already promised. And the things that God has spoken prophetically, I'm going to believe those things above my circumstance, and I'm going to use them as a weapon in my hand to fight through whatever may come. Listen to this scripture out of 1 Timothy 1.18. Should be familiar to you even if it's in the Passion Translation. Paul says to Timothy, so Timothy, my son, I'm entrusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life. How many remember some of the very first things that God spoke over your life? How many of you have a prophetic word that God has spoken over your life? Amen. In keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment. Say that little phrase with me. Process of fulfillment. Say it again. Process of fulfillment. Okay? In this great work of ministry. In keeping with the prophecies spoken, spoken over you. With this encouragement, use your prophecies as a weapon as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. For there are many who reject these virtues and are now destitute of the true faith. I remember when Mickey Strickland, do you mind if I tell this? I've, since I already am doing it from the platform. When he was battling COVID in the hospital, he was very sick. And the, and the Lord just had us prophesy to him, had his wife Evelyn go down and prophesy to him. And we prophesied life back into you, didn't we? Right? And it shifted something. It absolutely shifted something for him. What we've got to understand is that we've got to take the prophecies. We've got to take what God has spoken over us and not just say, whatever will be, will be. We can't take a fatalistic, passive approach to the prophetic word of the Lord. We've got to know if God spoke it, he knew we were going to need it. Amen? And so we've got to learn how to take those prophecies and war a warfare with them. Psalms 119.11 says, I consider your prophecies to be my greatest treasure. And I memorize them and write them on my heart to keep me from committing sin's treason against you. Isn't that interesting? You know why? Because when circumstances come and press in on you, sometimes it's easy to forget what God has said. But God is saying we've got to memorize them, write them on our heart. We've got to lay hold of them, and we've got to believe that what God said he will do. Amen? First Thessalonians 5.20 says, and don't be one who scorns prophecies. Despise not prophecies. 
okay? And I believe that we've got to understand that, first, of course, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, and this is the frustrating one, we know in part and we prophesy in part. <laughs> Yay. 